in the last video, we wrote this, this neat little method here to find the last node of the list. That was this chunk of code here. Keep going while list get next is not null. And when we got to that last node, set the next to refer to a brand new node, effectively adding a new element at the end of our linked list. Walk down to the end, attach a new node to it. And that seemed like a great idea. Um, the thing that we didn't worry about, and maybe you did worry about, but I didn't, um, but it's going to turn out to be a big deal, is this code doesn't always work. There's a scenario where this code doesn't work for us. And the key that tells us this code might not work in all scenarios is right here. This line of code says list get next. The very first thing we do with list is ask for its next. And any time we do something like that with a linked list, we should worry about, well, wait a second. What if the list was empty? If the list is empty, that means list the variable stores the value null. And if I say null get next, what do I get? I get a null pointer exception and my program crashes, right? So what do I do? How can I handle adding last when list is null? What should I do when list is null? And I think there are two reasonable solutions. Solution number one for handling empty lists is add a precondition that says list is not null. This doesn't work for the empty list. List is not empty, has at least one value, however we want to express that. And that's a reasonable precondition. Maybe we don't know what to do if the list is empty. Maybe maybe add last doesn't shouldn't work when the list is empty, right? I mean if the list is empty, you can't add it occurs to me maybe this isn't super obvious. Maybe you were thinking to yourself, wait a second, couldn't we solve this by just throwing in some code at the beginning that says if list is null then list equals a brand new node with s and null and then return oh sorry I guess I don't return any oh I'll just return and that will exit the method maybe that would solve the problem but this doesn't solve the problem because remember same problem as something we've seen many times now list is a local variable reassigning to list is lovely inside of this code but at the end of this code the list variable dies making this new node did nothing and if I had a variable outside that referred to null and then I say I would like to add last of outside to store the value x let's say then at the end of this method outside is still null list was temporarily internally a node that stored x and null uh, but then we returned and list died and outside still refers to null so this code that I just added that looked lovely does not actually solve the problem does not actually change my variable on the outside to store a null and the more I think about it the more I realize there isn't any way that I can change that variable on the outside to store this brand new node there's no way so there's two things we can do to solve the problem two solutions as I said before solution number one is make a precondition that list is not empty maybe we just can't make it work when the list is empty and I think that's an excellent solution but I want to challenge us to to write a fancier to look at a fancier approach and that's solution number two change the return type from void to return the resulting list if our method returns the resulting list, then we could return, think back to that example we had just a moment ago, when we said if list is null, we'll, ret we'll make a new node. What if we made that new node and returned it? Then at least someone outside of the add last method could get back that node and do something with it. So that would be the next best thing. So I want to look at writing add last in a scenario where it actually returns the resulting list. So that's what we're going to work on now. And we're going to write it in pink. Because pink's a good color for returning nodes, I guess. So, public static node. It's going to return a node. Add last. Just like before, it takes in a node. We'll call it list. It takes in the string data value to add at the end of my list. And I'm going to note that this not only adds to the end, but it returns the resulting list. Returns the modified list. 
let's see if we can write that code. In fact, I guess if I, it should be implicit, but because we're new to linked lists, I'll be more ex explicit about this. It returns the front of the modified list. Okay, now let's write the code. So what did we have before? We said, well, list is not, sorry, well, list get next is not null. We advance to the list, list equals list get next. And when we got to that last node, we said uh, we need to actually attach the new node to it, list, equal, uh, list set next to be the new node with s and null. That was our code from before. Uh, but we also we now have this additional challenge of returning the front of the modified list. How do we do that? We don't have the front anymore. We lost it when we walked down the list. So returning list is wrong. Right? That would return the the actually that returns the second to last node now. I don't want the second to last node. I want the front of the modified list. So the solution is make a note of the front of the list before you start destroying, uh, losing it and walking down the list. Then we could return front at the end. I'm going to write this a different way just to drive you nuts because I think nine times out of ten instead of memorizing the front what we'll do instead is we'll advance through the list oh, oh boy, not a good variable name <coughs> excuse the coughing we'll advance through the list using a, vari a temporary variable so my temp will start at the beginning of list and it will be temp that does all the work of advancing down the list while temp is ne get next is not null temp equals temp get next when I get to the end temp refers to the last node so I'll set the I'll set the next to be a new last node, but now I have not lost the original list. I haven't changed the original list. So it's, it's not really any different, but I think you'll often see us writing it like this, where we have a temporary variable that walks down the list, but we still keep track of the original front of the list. Okay, so far so good, but we haven't actually solved the original problem of what if the list is empty, and now we can do that. What if list is empty? What if it equals null? Hey, this would be a good time to point out, what does this do? What does this code do? List equals null. And the answer is null pointer exception. It crashes. If list is null, then list doesn't refer to any object. And since it's not an object, I can't call a method like dot equals. We're going to get a null pointer exception. So whenever you're testing if something is null, make sure you're using equals equals, or in this case, not equals if you're testing if it's not null. Okay, if list is null, what do I do? I, well, I can't actually attach anything to the list. But I can do the next best thing. I can make a new node with s and null. And since I've decided I'm going to return the new, the front of the modified list, I can return this node. So that's what my code is going to look like. And I think it will help to see what it looks like to use this code, too. So let's write the code that would use this somewhere on the outside. Somewhere on the outside, I have my variable outside, and it refers to some linked list. And then I say add last outside, and the value I want to add is uh, meow. How about meow? in honor of my cat. Okay, I'm looking around and yes, the cat looks quite honored or asleep, something like that. Anyway, add last, outside, and meow. What does that code do? Well, if the link list I pass, if outside actually is not empty, this will walk down to the end and attach meow, and it will return the original front of the list, and I'm ignoring the original front of the list right now. But on the other hand, if outside is null, this will return a brand new node, and I'm not doing anything with that node. So the correct way to call this method is to write outside becomes add last outside meow. In other words, pass the original list, and I get back uh, the front of the modified list is what that said a moment ago. I get the front of the modified list, so I should store the front of the modified list in that same variable now. And that way, if I get back a brand new node, I've saved it. If I get back anything else, 
I haven't changed outside at all. I mean, I haven't changed the variable. I haven't changed which node is referred to by the outside variable. I certainly have attached something at the end of that link list. All right, that's that's getting confusing. This is all very confusing. Yes, link lists are basically objects and references on steroids. So you definitely want to understand objects and references um, in order to understand link lists. The basic idea of a link list is not that hard. It's the do you understand all the subtleties of objects and references and variable scope and so on. And that's that's really what we're what we're pushing on right now. Um, let's see. I like to tell you what's coming up in the next video. And uh, I haven't even decided what's coming up in the next video. Uh, you know what? I think... I think that that concludes the sort of core uh, understanding of linked lists. Any further videos with linked lists, I'll either try some more sophisticated, some, some, some equally sophisticated examples. Um, in fact, I will assign you an example. Here's something to think about. What if we wanted to write a method that removed the last node instead of adding the last node? I think this would be a good challenge for you, knowing what you know so far. And this is going to uh, return a reference return front of modified list just like the add last we just wrote returns the front of the modified list and I'm gonna add a precondition here and that's that my list is not empty why am I guaranteeing the list is not empty because if it's empty there is no element to remove okay but even with that precondition you're gonna find that this is a, a tricky method to write so I might I might decide to implement this method in a future video or I might leave it entirely for you that we will definitely come back and explore linked lists in other contexts. We'll take a look at writing recursive code with linked lists. We'll take a look at writing classes that have linked lists as fields inside them, and we'll, we'll implement data structures using linked lists and all sorts of joyous things with linked lists. But I think this gives you a core understanding of, of uh, linked lists, and hopefully this helps you with whatever problems you're solving. Best of luck to you. I'll see you in another video. Bye.